Hello and welcome to the tutorial for the Happy Days fabric lunch bag pattern. I have cut out my pieces. So I've got two of my main fabric pieces. That's what I'm going to use for the main part of the bag. And then I've cut out two of the lining pieces. It's going to be inside the bag. And then I've cut out two pieces of the cinch top this is the bit that gathers at the top of the bag so there's two pieces of those so you've got your two outer your two lining your two cinch pieces my two handle pieces here cut two of those out so all in twos apart from this part which is going to be my rim and you need to cut out four of these pieces and to match those apart from the rim you need to cut some interfacing um, to go on all these pieces so however many pieces there that's how much interfacing you should have and you should also have two pieces that you've cut out from I think the templates nine and ten um, of fusible of um, yeah fusible interfacing as well that you should have cut out as well so you should have one two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten pieces of fusible interfacing according to the pattern instructions um, of how to cut it out. So the first thing we're going to do, just put all this aside, is we're going to start with our outer pieces of fabric. Lots of fabric in this one, lots of pieces. So and it does. it is a bit tricky to understand, but we'll, we'll get there together. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn my main pieces of fabric over. And I'm going to take my fusible interfacing, not that one, and I'm going to iron it onto the back of these. Before I do anything, that is the first step I'm going to do. Take my outer pieces and iron my fusible interfacing onto it. So my two outer pieces of fabric can now have um, interfacing ironed onto the back of them. And I'm going to lay one face sides down, so pretty sides facing no I'm not going to do that at all let's stop that. so I'm back from ironing on my interface into my two main pieces of fabric so it's important now if you lay them out with the um if you've got directional fabric so however your directional fabric is so if I just grab this because it's a little bit easier to see than on these clouds so my hearts are going this way okay so this is the right way up so I need both of my pieces laying so that the they look you know how they should look they shouldn't be upside down they should be the right way up both of them together okay you don't want one piece upside down because you're going to end up with one piece upside down okay difficult to show on this cloud fabric but so i thought i'd show you the hearts right so you need one piece pretty side facing up the other piece you're going to lay on top of it so the pretty side should be touching the pretty side and then you're going to clip along this bottom edge or pin, whichever you prefer. I'm really conscious to try not to get my arms in this, I know. But it's very difficult. Okay, so I've clipped along the long bottom edge. Okay, so short edge should be here, short edge should be here. And this long bottom edge should be clipped. And then we're going to sew along here, right the way along, using a quarter inch seam allowance. Or six millimetres, if you prefer doing it in millimetres. I prefer to work in inches. So, but yeah, so a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So right the way along this edge. So I've sewn along the uh, bottom edge. And I've taken it to the ironing board and I've laid it out flat and I've opened my seam up and ironed it out so that my seam is open. Okay, I'm going to fold it back in half again. So get your seam up and down like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to clip down this side now, the short edge, and down that side and then sew up these two edges as well again using a quarter inch seam allowance 
So just clip down these short edges. Make sure you line it all up nice and neatly. Okay, so you've got your long bottom edge sewn that's on the bottom still. And sew up this side and up this side as well. Leaving this top part open. Don't sew that part. So I've sewn up both sides of my bag. And now comes the trickiest bit probably with this bag. Um, and it's probably something that people get a little bit confused with on the instructions. So I'm going to do it nice and slowly. So what you're going to do is you're aiming to um, fold it so that this seam and this seam are touching each other. So we're going to open our bag out like this. So you can see this seam coming up here. Okay. We open our bag out and then kind of squash it down so that this seam and the bottom seam touch each other okay so just try and line that up as best you can so you it looks like your bag standing up with a bit of a triangle on the bottom there okay so once you've done that and you're happy that you've lined it up you're going to take your ruler or your tape measure and you're going to measure up five centimetres. Now, I work in old money, so I'm going to measure up two inches, um, which is the same. And I love using these um, quilting rulers because they're really handy. So I'm going to measure up two inches. I'm going to put a line there using my heat erasable pen. And then I'm going to draw. Oh, sorry. I just the camera to stand there. I'm just going to draw a line straight across. Now, you're going to be able to see if I'm doing this straighter than me because it's difficult for me not to get in the way of the camera and draw it, but hopefully I'll have drawn a straight line. But I will check it before I sew it. So I'm going to draw straight across there. And that is where I'm going to sew across. Okay? I'm going to do exactly the same with this side. So I'm going to take my other side, flatten it down to match up with this seam here. You can always check inside if you're meeting it. It's much easier. Okay. And then from the bottom again, you measure up five centimetres or two inches, whichever you want, you prefer to use. Make a mark. Draw a straight line across. And then you're going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to sew across here. And you're going to sew across here. I'm back from my sewing machine and I've sewn along here and along here. And now I'm going to just cut off this bulk. OK, so we don't want this bit. Now, make sure you leave it, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch down from your stitches. Let's give it a little bit there. Cut that off because we don't want that bit because it's too bulky. And we do exactly the same with this side. OK. Turn your bag in the right way. As you can probably tell, I've used heavyweight, quite heavyweight interfacing on mine. Um, the, the pattern does say medium weight is best, and it probably is, but I've um, I've got loads of this heavyweight interface, and I thought I'd give it a go. So I'll let you know whether it turns out okay. <laughs> we will see in a minute anyway. Right, so there you go. There's my um, main outer part of my bag done. And then what you're going to do now is you're going to repeat exactly the same steps to make your lining to go inside. So we take our two lining pieces and remember if they're directional print, you want to lay them how they're going to look. So lay them the right, both of them the right way up. OK, I've got plain, so it doesn't matter. Iron your interfacing on the back, which I've already done. Pretty side facing up pretty side facing down on top of it. I'm going to line them up. I'm going to do this in a bigger step because you don't want to watch me doing it all again. Okay. So I'm going to sew along here, just like I did before, just straight along the bottom, exactly like we did for the first bag. I am my seam out. And once I've done that, I'm going to fold it back in half and iron up this side. Uh, sorry, not iron. I'm going to sew up this side and up this side. OK, so along the bottom first, take it to your ironing board, press the seam out, 
fold it back in half again, just how it is now. Sew up the one short side and up two short sides. So I'm just going to go over doing those um, corners one more time with you. So I've sewn down the side, along the bottom and up the other side. I press my seam out. Remember, we're going to pick our bag up like so. And then we want to join this seam with this seam. So we're just going to flatten it. Yours will probably be a lot easier because you probably have used medium weight. But because I've used um, heavy weight, it's a little bit trickier, a bit thicker. It's okay. Right, so once we've done that, we've lined them up. You're going to measure up two inches or five centimetres. Draw your line across, sew along, do the same on the other side and then trim those corners off just like we did for the outer piece of the bag. Right, so I've got my completed outer piece and my completed inner piece. I've done the box corners the same and cut them off. Keep your outer piece box face it so the pretty sides are facing out keep the inner lining piece the wrong way um wrong, so wrong sides are facing outwards right sides facing in because you're going to put it inside your main fabric box now so we're going to pop this in here and we're going to connect the seams up so be careful to line up your seams So I've got a real wobble on the camera today. There we go. Sorry if that made you a bit sick. I'm going to line up these seams when the clips don't ping out of my hand and line up this seam as well. And take your time doing this. Get it nice and neat. And then you're going to line, clip all the way around these top edges. Okay? So right the way around, you're going to clip this together. Just take your time. I'm going to do this off camera um, so I can take my time to do it as well to make sure I line it up neatly. Once that's all lined up neatly, okay, so you remember your outer fabric should be facing out. Your lining fabric, the pretty side, you should be looking in. This is like your finished, how your finished bag's going to be look, look. You're not going to be turning it inside out like we have do in other bags. So your lining is the right way and your outer fabric, right way you can see both. The next thing you're going to do once you've clipped around the top is sew as close to this top edge as you can right the way around this. OK, you're not going to be able to see this on the finished bag, but you want to. So that's why you want to do it as close to the top as you can. Right. So take time making sure that you um, cl uh, clip or pin it right the way around, getting it as neat as you can and then stitch around the top. So there we have our finished outer part of the bottom part of the bag all done so I've sewed right the way along the top as close as I could okay we're going to put that to one side for for a minute and the next part we're going to work on are our handles okay so you need your two handle parts face down so pretty sides facing down and then you need to grab your two pieces of interfacing that you have for the handles we're going to lay them on and then we're going to go and take them to the ironing board and we're going to iron them onto the back of the handle straps. So I've sewn the inter um, ironed the interfacing onto the back of the handle straps and I'm going to attempt to do this um, in one step. Hopefully I should be able to do it for you without having to keep popping off to the iron. Right, so we're going to fold one of our handle pieces in half and crease it. Now I've got my little iron I use for my Cricut here. I'm just going to give it a little press just so I can see the, the line. And then open it up. So you should have the wrong side facing up and then you're going to fold so this edge meets that crease. Okay, just fold it in. You can, if you're interfacing stiff like mine, you can use your hands to press it but it is neater if you use an iron all right and then we're going to turn it around and then this edge i'm going to meet into the middle again there so i'm going to fold it into that middle part this is a really good way to do handles for bags as well if you haven't got um any webbing to hand and then we're going to fold that one back over 
and then fold it in half, okay? So our two outer pieces are joined into the middle there and then fold it in half and then press again. Okay? And you're gonna do that to both of your handle pieces. And when you've done that, you're gonna go to the sewing machine and you're gonna top stitch down this edge and down this edge. So along the top, uh, two long edges. So that one, and then top stitch down there as well. Okay, do that to both of your handles. Okay, I've sewn, I've top stitched down both sides of my handle pieces. So now I've got two completed handles. I'm going to put them to one side. And then the next part we're going to work on is our rim pieces. So these are the four rim pieces that you've got. And what you're going to do is you're going to create two with interfacing on and two without. Now those bits that you cut out from templates nine and ten, these fit onto here. Okay, so if you put them in the middle, they're not quite the same size as the rim so put them there and the next one and put it into the middle there okay so remember right sides facing down so you iron this onto the wrong side and you're just going to iron your fusible interfacing onto those two pieces my fusible interfacing is now on the back of my of two of my rim strips the other two have no interfacing on them OK, so you're only worried about the ones with the interfacing on at the moment. So just put one aside for now and then turn the other one over so that your pretty side of your fabric is facing up and it's up the right way. OK, what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and lay it onto the top of here. And we're going to measure in eight centimetres from this edge. And put a mark. And then we're going to do exactly the same on this side. So measure in eight centimetres. So I've got a real wobble on my camera today. I definitely need to get another stand. OK, so eight centimetres in that side as well. And then we're going to take our handles and we're going to lay them onto it and clip it. So I'm just going to grab my clips. OK. So where are my, my mark is there, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see it a bit clearer. So where my mark is there, doesn't help because I've got raindrop fabric. I'm going to put the edge of this halfway. So half of it's this side of that mark and half of it's that side of that mark. And I'm just going to lay it just over there. I'm just going to lay it just slightly over and then clip it. And then I'm going to take this part of my handle. And remember, we don't want it to end up like that, all folded over. So we've got to think about how we're laying this out. OK, so it should curve around like that. And we're going to do exactly the same with this mark here. We put it halfway that side of the mark and halfway that side of the mark. And then we're going to clip it. And then we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew along here and along here to secure this handle onto this rim piece. OK. So I've sewn my handle on as close to the edge as I could on both of these. Now, don't worry that mine kinks. It's because I've used such a heavy weight interface and hopefully well you probably haven't used such a heavy weight but it's fine what i'm going to do is because i need this to lay flat for a minute i'm just going to lay it and squidge it like that okay so we want this piece to lay nice and flat so if you have used heavy weight like me then just um give it a press down like that okay we're going to take now one of our other pieces of rim fabric the one that is not interfaced on the back right so this is your one that's not interfaced we're going to lay it pretty sides to pretty sides. And remember again that directional fabric, we want to be making sure that they're both facing the right way up. So all my raindrops coming down. OK, so we're going to lay it on top of this. And then we're going to pin. Along this top edge, OK. So I'm going to tuck my handle in there a minute so I can lay it flatter. Trying to do this and not put my arms in the camera is really tricky. But 
but I'm doing my best. So you can see, okay? Basically, this is just me clipping everything along. So I'm going to literally clip and do it quickly so that I can move on. So I'm going to check this in a minute when I get away from the camera to make sure I've lined it up properly because I can see I haven't. But once I've done this, once I've clipped along there and done it neatly, I'm then going to sew using a quarter inch seam allowance along this top edge here. OK, so that the handles inside. So along this top edge, you're just going to sew right the way along. So I'm back from sewing right the way along and I'm just going to flip it out now. And then you can see that you've got one completed handle piece on your rim. Okay, I'll give that a nice press in a minute. And what we're going to do now is do exactly the same with the other pieces. So we get our piece that we've got our fusible interface on face down. Take your handle, measure in eight centimetres from that side, eight centimetres from that side. Centre your handle in the middle of the mark. Make sure that you bend your handle round so that it is correct. Okay, don't we don't want a twisted handle. So sew the handle close to the edge here, close to the edge here, and then we lay our piece without interfacing on the top and sew along. Just exactly the same as we did for this piece. So we'll have two pieces looking like this. So I've sewn right the way along this edge and I've given them a bit of a press and then you just need to fold them outwards like this. Okay, so I want one piece pretty sides facing up and then I'm gonna open this one up as well. I'm gonna lay this on top of that with the pretty sides facing down, okay? So just like that. So both my handles are at the top. They're both opened out and the pretty sides are touching. I'm gonna line that up, these side edges. So line my seams up and line these side edges up because we're gonna sew down this edge. So move that up a little bit. Okay, so make sure my seams are lined up nicely there. And then clip on this side too. And I'm going to clip this side together. Yeah, it's just the handle that's pulling that, so don't, don't worry, just because my handles are so stiff. And line up this bottom bit as well. And then I'm going to sew down this side using a quarter inch seam allowance and then down this side as well to join all this part together. Okay, I've sewn down both sides of my handle and rim and I'm just going to turn them out now. So... You can see that we've just constructed the top part of our bag. Just fold it around that way. There we go. There's one handle and there's the other. And this is our completed top rim ready to be attached to the bottom part of the lunch bag. For the next part of our bag, we're going to attach our handle and rim to the main part of our bag that we've already sewn. So we're going to take our handles and our bag and we're going to put them over the top, just like that. Okay, so our handles are dangling downwards. So all our raw edges should be together along this part. Okay, and then we're going to match our seams up. So the seam for the handle part matches up to the seam for the bag part and we're going to carefully line that up and then clip it okay 
and then we're going to do the same on this side so we get our seams for our handle the seam for the bag and line them up we're just going to go around the bag then carefully and line up all of our raw edges around the bag and clip it okay once you've clipped it round and you're happy that it's all sitting there nicely we're going to sew around this top edge okay to secure it all together so i've sewn all the way around the top i'm just going to flip my handles up now and you should have your little bag finished and if you've got this far well done well done for keep going okay we're going to make the cinch top now to go um in the top of it but this is the the hardest bit done so well done for getting to this part so the next part of the bag we're going to be using our fabric that we've saved for the the cinch top the bit that you pull at the top okay so take one piece of uh, your fabric and lay it pretty sides down okay and we're just going to fold in this edge just at the top here we don't need to go too far and then we're just going to iron that edge okay and we're going to do exactly the same to this side all right i've just come in a little bit iron that edge in all right so just at the top there, you don't need to do it right the way down. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to fold over a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to give this here as a guide, so I'll make sure I do about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so that's about a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to fold over a quarter of an inch right the way along this top edge. I'm going to iron it. Just going to fold a quarter of an inch over right the way along. I hope you can see that what I'm doing here. I'm not in the way too much. Okay, so I've just done a quarter of an inch. Keep that side bit's come out a little bit there. Hold on. I just want to fold that in because when you put the ribbon in, it will keep it a nice give it a nice edge. Okay, so that's that done. Then, once you've done that, you're going to fold it over a half an inch, okay? And this is going to be your channel where your ribbon goes through, okay? So if you need to, I need to just fold mine in a little bit more there. And a little bit more on that side. And then I'm going to get my tape, my uh, ruler again, measure what half an inch I need to be measuring half an inch again just slightly over okay that's about right as long as you do it the same on both pieces okay so i've got my half an inch i'm ironing this here now i'm doing this by eye but i will Double check before I sew anything. I always do. I just try and do it so that I can get it done while you're while I'm on the video. Okay, so I can show you what I'm doing. So I've ironed over half an inch on one piece. Okay, so take your next piece and you're going to do exactly the same again. Fold it in at the sides. Give it a little press. I'm just going to do it to one side to show you. Fold over a quarter of an inch all the way along, press it, and then fold over half an inch so it matches that one, press it. Okay? So I've ironed both my channels in. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin these together, right sides together. So I need to fold one of them over, flip one of them over so the pretty side is facing up. And then I'm going to lay this one on top. And remember, the channel needs to be at the same you know channel at the top both of them and lay and line that up 
line these side edges up. Now I'm going to pin or clip down this side and this side. Oh, I've lost my clips. Now I'm going to sew up to here. Okay, so I don't want to sew these channels. I want to make sure that fabric's down. This is a little bit tricky, this bit. But, you know, just, just persevere. You'll get there. Okay? It's easy when you're at your ironing board. And if you've got one of those purple things that I'm always going on about, excuse my arms, these, it makes it a lot easier when you get to bits like this where you can hold it in. Okay? So you're going to sew up to your channel. But make sure that that bit's folded in. So if you've got your purple thing... You can literally just hold it down like that when you're sewing. It's really handy, okay? So you're going to stitch from there right the way down. Do not sew this bit, all right? Because if you do, you're not going to be able to get your ribbon in to tie close it. And exactly the same on this side. So you're going to clip down this side as well. And don't, and again, not on this bit, but all the rest of it. And then um, once you've clipped it, sew down that side as well. So I've sewn down both my um, sides and I've pressed my seams open and then I've carefully made sure that that's tucked in exactly as the instructions were. OK, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch right, or sew right the way and I'm going to do it close to the edge because I want to make sure I've got enough room to put my ribbon in. So I need to secure this channel right the way along here because we're going to thread our ribbon through here and we don't want it to fall out so when you get to these end bits here on the seam make sure you've tucked it in properly okay and you're only literally catching the bottom part of it so you need to do it right sort of close to this edge right the way around you need to sew right the way around there so I'm back from sewing along this edge here creating our channel for our ribbon um, as you can see you've got openings there to put your ribbon in and in this side as well so those bits shouldn't be sewn just in there so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our main part of our bag again and we're going to fold the handles back down because we want to expose the raw edges okay so we've got our raw edges showing we're going to take the piece that we've just sewn and we're going to put it so that our channels go over first right so you want the raw edges of the bags to match up the bag and the, the cinch top okay so you're going to put it right down over the bag so we should have the raw edges against the raw edges the channel should be down here and then we're going to line up our seams again And clip it so line up this seam line up this seam and then we're going to do just like we did before we're going to clip all the way around the top edge of this bag okay we're going to clip it all the way around and then when we've done that we're going to go back to the sewing machine and we're going to sew right the way around again um, to attach this to our main part of our bag so I've sewn around the top of my bag right the way around and I'm just going to pull this now back over where it needs to be okay and tuck it in pull my handles up okay, you've almost finished your bag now it's entirely up to you at this stage whether you do this or not. Um, you can leave it like this, put your ribbons in and you're finished, which we'll go over in a minute. Or if you want to conceal, not that you're going to see this anyway because it's inside, but if you really wanted to make sure you couldn't see any raw bits, if you tuck it down, okay, so you've got your handles up and this is nice and tight here, you can... Pin along here and then sew. If you fit, you can feel the bulk where the the um, seams are in there. You can sew just this side of it, just to encase it. 
right the way round. If you like, just to encase that right the way round there. Okay, I'm going to go and do that on mine because I would like to have that all encased in. But this is optional. You don't have to do it. Okay, so I'm back from um, doing my row of stitches around here. Again, like I said, this is completely optional. Um, the difference is if I turn... I'll have to clip that off in a minute. This now, you can see that all my raw edges are completely encased. All right, so you can do that or you can't do that. It's up to you. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to clip that thread off. So all that's left now is to put your ribbon in your channel. So go to the edges and find where your channels are, the pieces that you've left open on the inside. I've got threads everywhere here. Okay, so there's my channels there. Now, I have no idea if I'm using this correctly, but I know it's supposed to be used for threading things. So if I'm using it wrong, please tell me. <laughs> But anyway, I've got some cord that I'm using, but you can use ribbon um, or anything really that you, you want to use. And I'm going to, like I say, I don't know if I've done this right. If you've got ribbon, you can put a safety pin on the end to help guide it through. I'm going to use this to guide mine through. Hopefully it will work. And I'm going to thread this right the way through here. Using it as a guide to go through. Well, it is working anyway, so that's a good thing. I'm going to go right the way round and come out the other side. Okay? So right the way round and then come back out here. Okay, so I have threaded my piece of cord right the way through. So I'm back to the beginning again, where I started from. Okay, so I've got one bit coming out one, one the other way. And then I've, I've cut that off, leaving quite a long bit. And then I'm going to start with a new piece of cord. I'm going to turn the bag round and I'm going to go to the other opening that we've got. I'm going to do exactly the same with another piece of cord and go right the way round again. Okay, so as you can see, I've threaded it through. So I've got two pieces hanging out this side and two pieces hanging out this side. All that's left for me to do is to cut this to the length that I want. And then I'm going to tie a knot, tie these two pieces together. Because what I don't want to do is for them to disappear back in the bag when I pull it. And then the same on this side. Just tie them on. It's a bit easier if you've got ribbon. Okay, and then I can just pull shut my lunch bag like so okay fold it up and there you go there you have your cinch top lunch bag all completed so here's the completed bag all looking beautiful, ready to be used. I'm really looking forward to seeing all your lovely makes. Um, so I hope this tutorial was useful for you.